Today is Saturday, the 18th Sunday, when we are done. Our silent is Paula Frank and our homeless is Dean Zavea. Our opening in is page 487 in Catholic Book of Worship. Please.
your servants, O Lord, and answer their prayers with unceasing kindness, so that for those who glory in you as their creator and guide, you may restore what you have created and keep safe what you have restored. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. from the book of Ecclesiastes. Vanity of vanities, says the teacher. Vanity of vanities. All is vanity. Sometimes one who has toiled with wisdom and knowledge and skill must leave all to be enjoyed by another who did not toil for it. This also is vanity and a great evil. What does a person get from all their toil and strain? They toil under the sun, for their days are full of pain, and their work is a vexation. Even at night, their mind does not rest. This also is vanity. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God.
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Colossians. Brothers and sisters, if you have been raised with Christ, seek the things that are above, where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things that are above, not on things that are on earth, for you have died and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is your life, is revealed, then you also will be revealed with him in glory. Put to death, therefore, whatever in you is earthly, fornication, impurity, passion, evil desire and greed, which is idolatry, do not lie to one another, seeing that you have stripped off the old self with its practices and have clothed yourselves with the new self, which is being renewed in knowledge according to the image of its creator. Is there renewal? There is no longer Greek and Jew, circumcised and uncircumcised, barbarian, Scythian, slave and free, but Christ is all and in all. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Then he had difficulty seeing. 
Then he had difficulty walking. He went to the doctor that same day. And after examining the man, the doctor said, you have a brain tumor that will require special surgery immediately. However, there are great risks. If you survive the surgery, then there will be a critical recovery period that will last for about a year. If you make it through that, then each year after you can be more reassured of a full recovery. Well, the man made it through the surgery. He made it through that first year, and then he had the interview which ended up in the newspaper. The reporter asked him, have you learned anything through this ordeal? The man said, I have learned that my life is on loan. The obvious point of today's readings, the one that everyone seems to get, is that we can't take our possessions with us. When it's time for us to depart from this world, we're going to leave everything we have behind. As scripture says, the things you have prepared, whose will they be? But that is only one point of this parable. As with so many of Jesus' parables, there is a deeper or hidden meaning. The, par the deeper meaning of this parable is that our lives are on loan. Fool, this very night your soul is required of you. At any point in time, our life can be taken away. Just like all our material possessions, which we cannot take with us when we leave this world, our lives will also be left here. As Jesus said, it is our souls that go on to eternal life. So the question then is, how do we live our lives? in the here and now. We are very good at storing up treasures in this world, but what treasures are we storing up in heaven? There's an old story told of a very wealthy man who died and went to heaven. An angel guided him on a tour of the celestial city. They came to a magnificent home. Who lives there? asked the wealthy man. Oh, the angel replied, on earth he was your gardener. The rich man got excited. He thought, wow, if my gardener gets a home like that, imagine what mine will be like. If this was the way gardeners live, just think of the kind of mansion in which he would spend eternity. As they processed along, they came to an even more magnificent home. Whose is this? asked the rich man, almost overwhelmed. The angel answered, this person spent her life as a missionary. The rich man was really getting excited now, and they processed on and were soon out of the city and on the outskirts. Finally, they arrived at a tiny shack with no window and only a piece of cloth for a door. It was the most modest home, if one can call it a home, the rich man had ever seen. And this, sir, is your home, said the angel. The wealthy man was flabbergasted. I don't understand. The other homes were so beautiful. The gardener got a lovely home. The missionary an even better one. Why is my home so tiny? The angel smiled and said sadly, I'm sorry. We did all we could with the materials that you sent us to work with. What materials are we sending up to heaven that may be used to build our heavenly homes? Realizing that our lives are on loan gives us a different perspective on how to view material things. Are these material things just for gathering and storing up, or are they to be shared with those around us, the less fortunate, the homeless, the poor, and the hungry? How we deal with our material possessions in the here and now determines what we are sending up to build our heavenly home. Here's an illustration. There are three kinds of givers, the flint, the sponge, and the honeycomb. To get anything from the flint, one must hammer it. Yet, all we get are chips and sparks. The flint gives nothing away if it can help it, and even then, only with great display. To get anything from the sponge, one must squeeze it. It readily yields 
uh, to pressure and the more it is pressed, the more it gives. Still, one must squeeze it. To get anything from the honeycomb, however, one needs only to take what freely flows from it. It gives its sweetness generously, dripping on all without pressure, or without begging or badgering. And the honeycomb is a renewable resource. Unlike the flint or the sponge, the honeycomb is connected to life. It is the product of the ongoing work and creative energy of bees. If we share, like a honeycomb giver, our lives will be continually replenished as we grow and give. When we share, we freely give and acknowledge that all we have is on loan and others have as much right to God's things, to God's creation, as we do. You see, my friends, the problem with the rich man in today's parable is not the wealth that he accumulates. Notice that Jesus does not criticize the farmer's wealth, no, nor does he imply that he gets it dishonestly. The man probably worked very hard, very diligently, and he's obviously a good manager. Nor is there any complaint about a well-deserved and relaxing retirement. Then why is he called a fool? His mistake is in thinking that his security lies in those very same possessions. That they will somehow guarantee him years of drinking, of eating, and making merry. He forgets that all he has is a gift from God. In fact, he forgot God altogether. The socialistic concept that everything belongs to the state and the capitalistic concept that all belongs to the owner both fail to recognize that God is the giver of life and all that is in life. The teacher was talking to a class of little children about the presence of God in daily life and she asked them if God is everywhere, and they correctly answered yes. And in an effort to get the matter closer to their own personal living, she named actual situations. Is God in the church? Yes. Is God in the home? Yes. On the street? Yes. Is God in the prisons? Silence. That one had them stumped. Finally, one little girl came up with as good an answer as there can probably be. Yes, God is there, but those people don't know it. That was this man's mistake, wasn't it? God was in his life, but he didn't know it. God was in his fruits. God was in his fields. God was in his goods. God was everywhere, except in his gratitude. Everything he had was on loan, including his life which, as we heard, is demanded of him that very night. So, my friends, recalling the story at the beginning of this homily, do we wait, do we have to wait until something devastating happens for us to realize that we can't take it with us? Everything we have this side of eternity is on loan, including our very lives. Automobiles are not the only things that will be recalled by their makers. Christians everywhere, 
that we may not judge success in life by the standards of this world. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For the members of this community, that we may have the wisdom to know what is truly important in life. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. For world leaders, that they may work to see that the wealth of this world is distributed fairly. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For those who are well off, that they may share with the poor and thus make themselves rich in the sight of God. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. For all our sick relatives and friends and for those listed in our bulletin sick list, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. prayer. For our loved ones who have died, those who died this past week, especially Thomas Davies, Florence Ace, and those who rest in our cemeteries, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. For our own special needs, all those we hold deep down in our hearts, and for all those who have asked us to pray for them, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. As we remember the most holy ever virgin, Mother Mary, St. Joseph, and all the saints, we commit ourselves, one another, and our whole life to God the Father, to God the Son, to God the Holy Spirit. Amen. <laughs> See you. 
pray, my sisters and my brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice, the sacrifice at your hands for the, the praise, praise and glory of his name, for our, our good and the good of all his holy church. Graciously sanctify these gifts, O Lord, we pray. And in accepting this offering of this spiritual sacrifice, make of us an eternal offering to you. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. And with, with your spirit. spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to, up to the Lord. Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It, it is, is right, right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. For out of compassion for the waywardness that is ours, he humbled himself and was born of the Virgin Mother. By the passion of the cross, he freed us from unending death, and by rising from the dead, gave us life eternal. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim.
Remember, Lord, your church, spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of love, together with Francis, our Pope, Thomas, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our sisters and brothers who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours for Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress. As we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the, the kingdom, kingdom and the power, power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace. My peace, I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. And grant us the peace and the unity of your kingdom, where you live forever and ever. Amen. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of our Lord's love and peace. May this be the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Say the word, and my soul shall be. May the body of 
Christ, bring us unto life everlasting. May the blood of Christ take away our sins. May it fill us with the Holy Spirit and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Some highlighted announcements in our bulletin for this week. 
One is that our email is changing. We are slowly converting to the Archdiocesan email. And our new email address is St. John Evangelist.ca or CA, just CA, right? Thanks, Dorota. At archtoronto.org. Uh, you'll find it correctly in the bulletin. Please take one home with you. A uh, reminder that uh, August 17th, the annual Mass for the Faithful Departed will be returning to our Catholic cemeteries. And the closest one to us is at Assumption, which is at Derry Road and Tonkin. And the baptismal prep for uh, scheduled this week has now been postponed to August 10th. Father Bob is on a much-deserved vacation. Once again, please take a bulletin home with you for the rest of the parish news. And we thank Father Frank for celebrating with us today. Let us stand and pray. Accompany with constant protection, O Lord, those you renew with these heavenly gifts, and in your never failing care for them. Make them worthy of eternal salvation. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you. The Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.